Okay, so you started talking about Doctor Who. Yeah. Yeah, it, the the Doctor Who situation is one giant shit show. And it certainly has not helped with the with an old showrunner coming back, the man responsible for uh reviving the series back in 2005. Think of him as kind of our new uh kind of the Dave Filoni for uh for Doctor Who. Except he's way more overt with the messaging he's pull, pushing. Especially with something like this. Doctor Who showrunner Russell T. Davies gives Collider interview admitting he turned the show into a into queer self insert. Because yes, he is a gay man. Um, but even as I've been saying uh in other streams or any comments on uh like uh Duke Devil's uh reviews of the show so far. This is just the Russell T. Davies full mask off. Like if you've watched the series that start that he when he revived Doctor Who in 2005 and with that era while he was running the show, you definitely got inklings of this stuff. It just again, like we were just talking about when it comes to storytelling and everything like that, the subversionary things were a lot more subtle. Well, a little more subtle. They just were not so blatant and uh, and everything like that. But then, like it was too, like once he got to other projects, and, and especially when he got to doing the ser- the spinoff series for Doctor Who called Torchwood, that's where a lot of it started ramping up. Especially when it went over to, you know, like, I always think Showtime or Stars or something like that, which. Let me kind of look it up really quick because they they did go away from I think the BBC to a different. I know they they can't they again it was like a whole thing of funny you take a thing that's culturally British and everything like that and then bring it to the states and man do they ramp up on uh, the heavy heavy extra cultural bullshit. But um, oh, let me see. Nah, the Anglos are just that gay. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. There is that unfortunate side of everything. But yeah, it's like when they got to series four, they went to, it looks like, was it the HBO? I could have sworn. It was like a different um it was a different company or a different uh oh yeah okay cable network stars so that's where it went to it did go over to stars but on to this uh so after the complete failure of the new doctor who episodes space babies and devil's cord and devil's cord is the one that features the the drag queen villain, uh, very much in that realm of things, very over the top, and this also it's just rather hilarious. The the new this new doctor that's taken over, Shuti Gatwa, his doctor is also very very cowardly, very running away, even more so. But yeah, it's it's some cringy shit. But the cast and crew of BBC turned because di- this is this is the thing. Yeah, they went over to Disney Plus. Show have got on record trying to do damage control and gaslight fans about the reception. Russell T. Davies went to Collider to pitch his narrative that identity politics uh, supersedes everything uh, and said some insane things that show his intent has nothing to do with making the current iteration of The Doctor a great show. Because, yes, the, the, the show hit a major rut with... The uh, with the female doctor Jodie Whittaker, it was not going so well, 
And this is and it's part of why this all happened was because a major dip in the ratings and everything like that. They weren't getting the same viewership. So uh, they first brought back David Tennant, who was a very popular iteration of the Doctor. And they brought him back for the role, only to basically shit on him completely. Was he a bad Doctor? No, he was. He, he's like I said. He's one of the most popular iterations. What about Matt Smith. Matt Smith had his popularity too. Just uh, David Tennant was, was kind of like that peak time for uh, when the show really hit its stride with with this popularity, not only amongst you know Britain uh, the Britons, but also it got even more worldwide acclaim. Which, as uh, one guy Disparu has pointed out, it's like. This show got popularity off of being an incredibly British show. And now here you are taking it out of that sphere, Americanizing it, or as he says, making a California production. Um, and it basically, this is kind of what you get. But saying, pri uh, so now prior to new episodes, which they're oddly calling season one, even though Doctor Who is a show that's been around for 60 years. Yeah, this and uh, Doctor Who started like uh, 63 or something like that. How many actual seasons of Doctor Who? Because they, they took like a 20 year break. 26? Was it 26 years? 26 initial uh, seasons of Doctor Who. And then. Uh, they have what they then call the wild years, which is that period after uh, after the seventh Doctor. They did a, a made-for-TV movie, basically, which introduced Paul McGann as the eighth Doctor. That didn't take off, and then so that again it went on it went under it went just kind of under the radar for a lot of things. But I mean. Like my, I know my public broadcasting station played Doctor Who. They played reruns of the old series back then. Uh, and then 2005 rolls around, and Russell T Davies revives the thing, and with a lot of great success. With and first brought in um, Christopher Eccleston, which is he's still kind of my favorite. I wish he got another. I wish he stuck around for another season, but. Oh well, on that one, and then David Tennant took over for him, and then, like I say, that's where a lot of the popularity started firing up for the series. Um, but yeah, so Russell T Davies and Shutigatwa did a press tour to burn bridges with fans. They did. I don't know if we, I don't know if we covered it here, but I remember, I remember hearing about all that nonsense. Content of the interviews consisted of Shutigatwa. Uh, telling viewers not to watch Doctor Who if they're offended by direction changes and implying they're bigots, tying his narrative to white mediocrity. Meanwhile, Russell T. Davies made it clear the show would be put extreme would put would put extreme leftist politics over quality. Even the Sonic Screwdriver suffered because it was considered too much like a gun. Uh, and so it became the ridiculous redesign that fans online mock as looking like a sex toy. Oof. He claimed the show would venture into pushing the LGBTQ agenda and pro-abortion messages. That was the, the, ba the Space Babies episode, apparently. Uh, and made multiple statements that he would knowingly upset fans. And this is our new doctor here, yes. Uh, after she Liberal. got, oh, very much so, yeah. Gay, gay, gay twink, and and very much liberal, yes. The new doctor, yeah. This, this, this uh, the individual who claims oh, that's why be, it's on Disney Plus now, who's Rwandan but claims Scottishness. But hey, people can do that nowadays. Um, uh, after she got what well, went out. And said, it's sad people aren't watching the show. Literally, after telling fans to tune out, Russell T. Davies is going further as apparently he feels he's invincible with the new episodes being out. Collider interview opened with Russell T. Davies going on about Star Trek and specifically how Discovery and Strange New Worlds are his inspiration. 
quote, I love the old show. I always watched the old show. But when Star Trek Discovery came along, I finally became a proper fan. And now I'm devoted with Picard and Strange New Worlds. And frankly, the fact that I'm not married to Captain Pike is a major problem in my life. And I look to you... And I look to you, Collider, to put it right. I love that man. Oh, God, he's be Oh, my, for the love of Christ. I'm not fa- fil- ah, finishing that. Uh, he also revealed that he loves them for their agenda, something Star Trek fans hate saying. Quote, there's something, uh, there's something so 2024 about them. Uh, the interview then boasted about h- how uh, she was queer and asked him a- about putting in the agenda into shows. Quote, it's almost not the uh, not the, the, that deliberate. That's just the life that I lead, Russell T. Davies said, confirming Doctor Who is really now about a self-insert, like so much uh, bad modern writing. Even though fans know it feels forced with this terrible dialogue, shoehorning political topics into every moment of Doctor Who, Russell D. Davies continued saying, quote, it just feels natural. This is the world. It's 2024, and we're all embracing it. It's current year, people. Get with the times. Uh, He also doubled down on on a grooming agenda of children, which he said was part of what he wanted to do in a, in Dr. Who in prior interviews, as he stated, quote, now we have people who can come out in schools and be happy and thrive, which when I was that age was literally impossible. Finally, Russell T. Davies confirmed he would be bringing back the transgender roles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, can we bring back that little furry bastard and just wipe out the Doctor Who universe, please, for the love of Christ? Uh, for the new show's season finale, much to fans' chagrin, even the with poor ratings and fan reaction, Russell T. Davies is proud of destroying the Doctor Who legacy with extremist politics and evil gender ideology. His hubris is on full display in the interview, and there doesn't seem to be a path back to normalcy. So yeah, that's uh, the current part of the current leadership of writing staff for Doctor Who. Which, I mean, at this point, he almost puts people like, uh, like uh, Dave Filoni to shame. Uh, he's very much channeling his... Uh, but do you know what's interesting? After well, didn't mean to cut you off, but you reading oh, this no, article right. is very interesting. That again, he's gay, promote you know, gay liberal promoting all uh, this, all this, just all these, just uh, just uh, sin. We'll just do that word. We're just promoting all this stuff, and then Disney, Disney, Disney decides to somehow either make a deal with the BBC or get into bed with them. And they promote it on their platform. And folks, this isn't the only thing uh, that Disney is promoting. Like, this isn't just exclusively oh, yeah, the yeah. only thing uh, that they choose to promote. Look at all the other stuff that they're like. They're, the term grooming, probably a real term. 100%. This is the stuff your kids are watching and you're letting them uh, watch. I'm a hypocrite. I need to get rid of Disney Plus. Obviously, I have it because of everything that we were, uh, all the shows that we were watching. But I guess since we're right. not going to do Aqualite anymore, I guess I don't need it. <laughs> but uh, this, uh, we, you know what? This interesting. I don't want to watch Doctor Who. So thank you so much for killing all hopes of watching Doctor Who. I will stick with Star Trek. Well, you know, much like Star Wars, the old original series does exist out there for Doctor Who, which I would say to check out once you're once how, you've done this whole Star it? Trek kick. How, how uh, it's on the, it's on like free streaming services. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's out there. You can find it. But I mean, I, I yeah, I would because this is a funny thing, like. They, they've, they, and from like some of the reviews that I've already listened to and watched, they've talked about just how basically they have completely just dumbed it down, and they are almost patronizing with the way they talk down to the audience. 
And it's rather funny considering, like, I've watched old episodes of Doctor Who, and they, <laughs> I mean, from the, it, it was, yes, very much a family show geared towards, you know, families to be able to watch things for the kids to understand, things for the adults to understand, that happy balance of the two. And from watching it, other than, yes, like some kind of some of the cheesy cardboard sets and stuff like that. I never quite got the feeling of it ever talking down or like dumbing itself down to, you know, placate to a, a lesser audience or whatever, but like they played it as they needed to and put on a good show and which is what made it a popular one for its time. So then with the revival again, it, it was not so patronizing or anything like that. It told other, it told the stories that they wanted to tell, and like I said, yes, you could see some of that stuff creeping in. Uh, but unfortunately, it did kind of get to a point where, yeah, they they started doing more and more heavier, heavier cultural subversive stuff in the storylines, and that was basically kind of like what Fear of FEMA said. Doctor Who ended with Peter Capaldi. And Cabaldi was about the time I dipped out. <clears throat> yeah. Which I was very disappointed for because he really had a lot of potential to do it, to be a great version and iteration of the Doctor, but um, unfortunately they gave him nothing but trash scripts to work with. And then, like it was, it just got more and more with their progressive messaging and all that, and you thought people thought people thought oh they thought so much that uh after what they they call the chibnall era which is jody whitaker the the, the first female doctor because they again were doing all this stuff even with that the again this the cultural subversive messaging and everything like that Clara, I try. God, I tried. How many I doctors tried, were there? Like, How many so, doctors? There's been one female doctor, but she did not come into come into the picture until much later. But prior to that, there were thir- 12 to thirteen iterations, all male, all white, all straight. Only That's now have we gotten a female doctor. Who still who is I guess tech, who is technically gay, considering as a female liking other women. Um, and that's then, not gay stuff. Have, There's just women have, liking women. <laughs> and now we have uh, old Shuti Gatwa here, who is yes, they are going to be having their first the first gay doctor. So yeah, they're doing all that. Uh, it's like they don't learn. And they really care. are just trying to crash this bitch with no survivors. They're, they don't care. They're trying to normalize this. They're trying no, to they, normalize they, it's, it's everything they want to do. They want all of this. Look at this. They're, they're trying to they're they're trying to normalize homosexuality, which is uh, which is not right. And to to put the cherry on top, they're putting it on Disney Plus. And Disney Plus, in my opinion. Can be used as a as a pacifier to the kids. The kid, you give the password to the kids, they're gonna watch. They're, they're gonna watch what they want to watch, and they may just so happen to to um come you know turn turn this on. Now, right? I, I you know I don't know. I mean, it, the potential is there, but no, they're trying to normalize this, and I it's just normalizing again, all is, of it. Yeah, they're trying to. They're trying to trivial trivialize it and, and normalize it. They're trying um, to say they're say they're trying to say transgenderism, homosexuality, you know, male living male line with male, female line with it's all normal. When it's not, it's the it is the further the furthest thing from it. It's an abomination, and they, and they and they're trying to normalize it. Not my opinion. <laughs> no, it's uh, <laughs> right. Uh, not just normalize it; they want to amplify it. Yes. Good point. Exactly. Both amplify and normalize it in your face. And that's what we see. They, you know, dare I say, I feel like 
they think if they the more that they can put it in your face, the more that you'll either come to terms with it or accept it or just I don't know. I think either accept it or 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 maybe que- start questioning your beliefs. Like, oh, maybe this is normal. Maybe it's I'm not wrong. Propaganda works. Maybe yeah. it's not sin. Maybe maybe it, maybe it is. Maybe it's just love. Love is love, right? Yeah, no. love is love. Yeah, you go no. to, just loving a kid. Love is love. No, it's not normal to pour acid onto a kid's genitals. But that's how they that's how they get you. They, that the, that language sure. is For how sure. they manipulate everything. And that's what they're using here is certain language to yes, get to kids, get to Oh well we have to be inclusive. No. And there's that, yes. They are very adept at uh manipulating words against the regular person. It's just in your face and Again, I've said in the past, it's it's wrong either way, but at least an adult that has the ability to distinguish between right and wrong has a better shot at making a deci- an informed decision versus a child right. that is innocent from the most, generally speaking, is innocent and has no real defense mechanism. And that's why they it gets younger and younger, man. 